The Genelec 8341 is one of four speakers that are part of a series of coaxial speakers by Genelec called the Ones. The 8341A is the second smallest speaker of the lineup uh, with a volume of around 1200 cubic inches. Size-wise, it most closely resembles the typical bookshelf speaker. It's roughly the same size as the Ascend Acoustic Sierra 2. It's a little bigger than the Buchart S400 or the Kef LS50, and a little smaller than the Kef R3. This is a size that will fit most typical bookshelf speaker stands, although uh, it will fit on a medium-sized desk as well. The big difference between the Genelec The Ones and other coaxial speakers is the fact that it has two slot-mented woofers behind the front baffle. This means on top of the uniform dispersion, which results in a very flat and extended in-room measurement, this gives a very strong bass response, as you can see in my deer rack measurements. There is somewhat of a downside here with these dual front slot vented woofers. While you get more bass, they are venting deep bass directly above and below the speaker. This means the speakers may sound boomy on a desk or a console environment due to the reflections that it generates. I find these sound best on a stand where the bottom slot woofer can clear the edge of the stand. I was able to listen to these side by side with the Kef Reference 1 and the Rebel M126BE. The Genelecs have very wide dispersion, wider than the Reference 1, but slightly narrower than the Rebels. In terms of image, it casts a large image that's very front row, which makes the performer seem right in front of you. Whereas both the Rebel M126BE and the Kef Reference 1 gave a more laid back presentation, like the performers were much further away. I attribute this to the mid-range bump in the power response of the Genelec 8341, as well as the extended off-axis response of the lower mids. The speaker's response in the lower mid-range tends to dominate the sound and causes the vocals to separate from the rest of the instrument range in the sound stage. It's an interesting effect that's not for everybody. Regarding room correction, I much preferred the sound of Dirac Live versus GLM. In Room EQ Wizard, I measured the difference between the default correction curves of Dirac Live and GLM. The Dirac Live correction adds a bit of body and warmth to the sound, whereas the GLM software tends to make the sound quite bright with its default correction, as it cuts out most of the bass. These corrections tend to change the soundstage presentation a bit. Uh, GLM's default curve tends to bring everything closer to the listener, whereas Dirac seems to push things a little further in the background. I found reducing the response around 300 to 700 hertz in Dirac would do quite a good job of pushing the vocals and percussion instruments further back in the soundstage. Uh, I would say, look at the pros and cons of these speakers. Um, the pros, these speakers are hyper detailed because of the wide directivity and are not too placement sensitive as long as you clear them of bass reflections. On the downside, they do sound a little mid forward and it tends to draw more attention to itself than the rest of the spectrum. I personally prefer speakers with a sound stage a little further back more recessed rather than being in the front row. However, given how detailed these speakers are, they are worth a buy in my book if you're looking for an integrated full range solution and need something for near field listening. Although the downfiring slot mented woofer does make placement a little more tricky. If you don't need as much bass extension or you have room for a subwoofer, I think the Kef LS50 Meta might be a good choice as well for a near-field solution.